Now, butterflies get lots of attention. People write books about them. People paint butterflies. You know, even the hungry caterpillar turns into a butterfly. But I think that moths can be more amazing than butterflies. I want to try and convince you. One problem is that people think of moths as a bit more boring than butterflies. Duller, um, nocturnal animals, perhaps, that we don't see very much. But in fact, most of what we think we know about moths is actually a myth. So I want to bust some of the top five moth myths. The first myth is that moths, or rather their caterpillars, like to eat our clothes. There are a few types of moths where the caterpillars do like to munch through woolly clothes, but most moths eat entirely different things. In fact, name a food and there's probably a moth or a moth caterpillar that eats it. This is a hummingbird hawk moth. And you can see it hovering above a flower with its long tongue in the flower sipping nectar. And you can see from the picture that moths are quite fat and hairy. So they're actually amazing pollinators like bees. They spread pollen from flower to flower. And as they do that, they're basically keeping all the plants alive and all the animals that rely on those plants too. So that sounds like a superpower to me. This brings me to my second moth myth, which is that moths don't do anything useful. While we've already seen that they're important pollinators of flowers, which includes a lot of the crop plants that we eat. But I'd like to introduce you to some caterpillars which have a totally different superpower. These are the caterpillars of the wax moth. And scientists were amazed to discover a couple of years ago that their caterpillars can eat through and digest plastic. So if we can work out what's going on in their stomachs, we might have an answer to the world's plastic problem. My third moth myth is that moths aren't very good at sensing what's around them. Um, they often seem a bit bewildered when we see them collecting around lights. When in fact, that couldn't be further from the truth. This is a silk moth and you can see that it's got giant antennae which gives it one of the best senses of smell in the world. In fact, using its big fluffy feathery antennae, a silk moth can smell another silk moth from about seven miles away. The fourth moth myth I'd like to bust is that moths are all very small creatures. While there are lots and lots of species of micro moths like this in the UK, not much bigger than a pencil tip, the UK is full of medium-sized moths too, like this beautiful hummingbird hawk moth, which I'm meeting here. This is one of the most beautiful and colourful species that we can find in the UK. Now, in the UK, moths only get to about this size, like this hawk moth here. This is about the biggest moth you can find in the UK. But in other parts of the world, they can grow much bigger. So this time, put your hands up and show me how big you think the biggest moth could be. Have a guess. Some brilliant guesses again. And I can see a couple of you at exactly the right size. And I actually have one of the biggest moths in the world here. And again, it's behind glass because it used to live on a moth and butterfly farm. And because they only live for a week, when they die, we can protect them behind glass and keep them so we can look at them and learn about them for a long time. So this moth is called an atlas moth and the atlas moth is one of the world's biggest moths. This is only a medium sized one, but the biggest atlas moths get, so from wing tip to wing tip, it's 30 centimetres across, which is about as big as a classroom ruler. And they're very special moths. Um, you can see a trick that they use to hide. If you look closely at the wings, you might notice that they seem to look a bit like pythons. Now this busts the fifth and final moth myth, which is that moths are kind of slightly dull looking compared to butterflies. As you can see, moths can be incredibly bright and beautiful. And these patterns aren't just random, they've adapted to help the moth survive. Scaly sort of belly pattern and eyes and even a sort of snake looking head there. And that's a brilliant form of mimicry. Obviously a moth this big is nearly no good at hiding, but if they're sitting on a tree and something comes along, it might just think it's a snake and try to avoid it. So of all the moths we've looked at so far, thumbs up if you like the hummingbird hawk moth best with the big tongue. 
And who liked the teeny tiny micro moth best? The one that was the size of a pencil tip. And thumbs up if you liked the Atlas moth best. Fantastic. Well, shall I share my favorite type of moth with you now? I've got a picture of it somewhere. Oh, I can't see them. Can you help me to spot them? How did you do? Well, it's pretty tricky to spot, isn't it? There's one hiding here, and there's also one hiding down here. And the reason they're so hard to spot is because the pattern on their wings, that sort of salt and pepper pattern, perfectly matches the lichen that they're sitting on on this piece of wood. So it's a brilliant, brilliant disguise. Now these moths are called peppered moths after those salt and peppered wings. And they're my favorite because there's an amazing true story about these moths that helps us understand how all the different living things around us came to be on the planet. And that's the story I write about in my book, Moth and Evolution Story. And I'm gonna read that to you now. 